This company might disagree, but it seems as if one day there were none of these little boxes in our lives, and the next, well, everything's in them. The Tetra Pak carton is truly a 20th century wonder, like airplanes and socks that play music. The advantages of this package are many. For one thing, you can fit more square boxes in a given space than round cans. The other feature of the package is that it's aseptic. Once it's been sealed at the juice plant or dairy, no bacteria or other nasties can invade the package. This allows the storage and transportation of a lot of products to be done without refrigeration. The Tetra Pak carton gets its name from the company's first version. This shape is a tetrahedron. You might remember some products that used the early version. Even though the Tetra Pak container is a simple idea, it took a lot of engineering to bring it to market. Every component of the package and every step in the process of creating it works together. The package is comprised of three materials, polyethylene, paper, and aluminum foil. It's laminated into a thin, continuous sheet. From the inside to the outside of the package, the materials are polyethylene, aluminum foil, polyethylene, paper, and polyethylene. The thin aluminum foil keeps out bacteria and also prevents light from breaking down the contents. The paper gives the box its strength, and the polyethylene plastic is waterproof, doesn't react with food in any way, and serves to hold the whole works together. To pack Tetra Pak cartons, you also need this handy accessory. This machine takes flat rolls of pre-printed laminated material, liquid product from a pipe, and churns out the little rectangular filled boxes that fill our fridges. A large roll of laminate containing thousands of boxes is fed into the back of the machine. A sensor reads a special mark that's been printed on the paper. This mark will align the flow of laminate so that the printing will be centered on each box. At the top of the machine, a thin strip of polyethylene is stuck onto the edge of the packaging material, half on and half off. It will become the seam. In this chamber, the laminate is sterilized, and from here on in, everything takes place under sterile conditions. From the top down, almost everything happens almost at once. The laminate is formed into a tube around the product filler pipe. A float maintains the level of liquid product at the correct level. These jaws are not only making the package, they're the only thing pulling the laminate along through the machine. At the bottom of the filler pipe, the jaws first form the package into a sealed bag. The sealing is done by radio waves. The radio waves cause the aluminum to heat up and fuse the polyethylene. I told you all the components work together. The final step forms the bag into a rectangular box, and as they say in the food biz, Bob's your uncle. There is no glue used in the package. The polyethylene is fused into a complete package. Along the way, the machine has ensured the exact amount of product in the container and that the printing is properly aligned. It's aseptic, stacks well, safe, and cheap, and it uses very little energy to manufacture and transport. The only downside of the package has also been addressed, recycling. The laminated components can't be separated easily. This is superwood, a mixture of various waste plastics and shredded tetrapacks. 
In the words of the company, it's corrosion proof and lumber like. Judging from the amount of ingenuity that went into the design of the package, I guess we'll be living in tetra houses in no time. <laughs>